What's up, everybody? It's B Show Brian back for another edition of this podcast, which is still to be named. I don't know if it's the B Show podcast once again or if it's going to stay something horror related. Likely horror, B Show horror. I don't fucking know, but you're listening and I appreciate it, even if I'm neurotic and crazy. Uh, <laughs> speaking of listening, this song is Dimension Shifter from White Bat Audio. White Bat Audio has been a great source for myself as a low budget producer. Uh, doing everything in-house over the past few years and white bet audio has a ton of royalty free music just go check him out uh, hit him up on patreon give him some money i gotta subscribe to him just for uh i guess letting him letting me use his stuff over the years but i'm sure he'd appreciate the traffic to his youtube and his web his website so white bat audio this week we're talking about ash versus evil dead and I'm really excited because not everyone saw this series on Stars back a couple of years ago. Uh, they made it three seasons before running out of steam, and um, I was really disappointed to see it get canceled. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Ash vs. Evil Dead took place sometime after Ash returns from the Middle Ages, I guess. He's in his 50s. He's an aging man. He lives in a trailer park. And one night he gets high and he reads out of the Book of the Dead to some horror and summons the evil dead once again. And uh, they brought in a, a whole bunch of new characters. We'll talk about a few of them. And my ADD brain needs a, a little refresher, so I'm going to pull up some cheaty sheeties that I forgot to do. While I do... Um, I don't know. I just I, first episode, the first series introduced you to um, Pablo and Kelly, who ended up becoming his almost like his surrogate family, like his two assistants. Um, and then all of a sudden, a character played by Lucy Lawless, who was like a demon queen or some some crazy shit like that, the woman who actually wrote the Book of the Dead. I'm not going to give too many spoilers away because we're not talking about the series itself, just the future of it. Um, but then season two, you went back to Redford. Was it Redford, Michigan? It was somewhere in Michigan. Might have been a fictional town. But not so far from where I live. And that's where Ash goes back and you meet his father, played by Lee Majors, uh, <laughs> which was really interesting. I uh, had a really interesting dynamic there. And uh, then you meet Ash's daughter and all of this other stuff happens and she ends up like taking up his legacy and then you think they're moving forward. And they left a cliffhanger for season three. According to Bruce Campbell, it wasn't with any intent to continue with season four. It was just leaving it uh, kind of not unexplained because they're deliberate in where they take it, which is into the future, into a Mad Max style uh, nomad world, which is was fascinating to, con con to consider. But unfortunately, not enough people were seeing it because it was on stars. It got canceled before it was picked up by a Netflix or or something else internationally. So unfortunately the show ended about four years ago, three or four years ago. And after the show finished up, Bruce Campbell had said that he's too old to be playing Ash physically, that it was a stretch for this series, which they kind of poked fun at and went meta with it. I think there's the scene where he's getting dressed up in the beginning. You think he's getting ready to go fight and he like pulls this leather uh, girdle to suck in his gut and everything, but he's actually going out on the town. Uh, as a, a, a middle-aged man. So, very funny. The series was really interesting. They brought in a lot of... They, they built on the mythology of the Necronomicon, where it came from, different things it could do, different demons that existed within the franchise. And I think they did a really good job. Had it been on a Netflix or something like that, it probably would have been a lot, a lot more uh, widely viewed and respected amongst horror fans, except people couldn't find it. Until recently, now it's on Netflix, but uh, very interesting, and to me, I, I enjoyed it a lot better than some of the newer uh, horror fare that has come out recently, but with some exceptions. But interestingly enough, I was very excited this week because I, I read an article, which I'm going to pull up right here. Let's see, here we go. Bloody Disgusting, Bruce Campbell teases that Ash versus the Evil Dead animated series is being discussed. Now, according to Bloody Disgusting, he was at the San Diego Comic-Con talking to Collider, 
and they were talking about Ash versus Evil Dead. They were talking about the video game. They were talking about Evil Dead Rise, which is coming out sometime this year, which is the next film in the franchise. And continues, I believe, past and building on potentially the Evil Dead remake that came out in 2018 or 19. That was very well received. And in discussing this, he said, yeah, as an animated series, you pick up right where the show left off. You can do the future a lot easier in animation. I still sound like Ash. And, you know, my voice hasn't been as beat up as my body has been, so I can still do that crap. So I'll still do the video game, and we're already talking about an animated series. So, all hands on deck for Evil Dead fans. This is not just talking about future video game installments. This is talking about continuing the Evil Dead franchise as an animated series. Now, it sounds a little strange. I get it. Animated horror series, but... um, I think this could really be great for a number of reasons. And I don't want to be like, like, I don't know, Kevin Smith has caught some flack. And I know I cracked on him in the, the Munsters video a, a couple weeks ago. But he tends to fanboy and gush and like, oh, my God, man, it was so amazing. Like, oh, God, I watched the Batman and I cried. And, like, I get that because I cry at some stuff, too. And I don't want to sound like fanboying all the time. But this, I'll, I'll be honest, I really enjoyed that series. <laughs> I was really disappointed to see it go bye-bye in the car car. So, lo and behold, when I read this earlier this week, I thought, oh my god, the, the gods have answered the gods have answered my prayers. Hopefully they answer these Mega Millions, too. <laughs> We're just going off the rails tonight, but uh, I'm crazy, and that's what you get with the mad scientist of podcasting, B-Show Brian. So, thank you for sticking around with, through the, the nuttiness and neurosis. So, I honest, I, I'm really excited for a number of reasons. Uh, an animated series... As Bruce Campbell alluded to, you can continue. And I remember having this conversation with uh, Andy, who was a former co-host of mine for the former B-Show podcast a long while back. Uh, animated series, comic books, they, they're like the perfect medium in some ways if you have legacy franchises. And let me explain. If you have Ash Williams and Bruce Campbell's aging out, right? Or let's say you have an animated Star Wars series. And I've been name dropping Star Wars recently. Uh, Mark Hamill can continue to do the voice of Luke Skywalker for a while. And if you end up doing deep fake technology and they synthesize the voices, you could have Bruce Campbell playing Ash Williams into the next century if you wanted to, if it was that strong. Copyright will be interesting to see how that goes uh, into the future with this new technology. But it's definitely something I've thought of over the past weeks. I tend to look out on the horizon and it's like what things are doing with technology now You could have an animated series centered around a legacy character and continue on in perpetuity just using their likeness and animated self. So, um, you know, it's really fun to imagine how far, how much farther things could go. I mean, you can get around with comics and with animated series. You can get around the lapsing of time because you can go back and tell other stories. You can take your time and... And almost like the show 24, each episode could be one day in time, whereas in a lot of films and television, I mean, other than 24, in a lot of films and television, one episode could could span several days, weeks, months, or even years. So in this case, when you have the Necronomicon, with the cliffhanger of season three leading into a futuristic season four, You could go to the future and tell that story. You could go back and tell other stories beforehand. You could even go back, and this is the amazing thing. Uh, Didn't want to jump the gun here, but the multiverse theory. I mean, if you take a cue from Rick and Morty, you could do anything in an animated series. As I mentioned, you could go ahead, you could explore that. You could go back and retell things and and re-explore the cabin, the original Evil Dead. Maybe Ash tries to stop things. Maybe he goes back in time. Or, and I, I know they kind of did that in the series, but you know, revisit that idea where Ash tries to, um, you know, back to the future everything and really just end it and prevent all this shit from happening in the first place. But then it makes everything so much worse because then Ash never realized his potential and evil. One thing that I take from a lot of classic horror movies is evil finds a way, right? Life finds a way from Jurassic Park. Life, uh... Uh, finds a way. Uh, wow, that was a really bad. It was almost a good Jeff Goldblum. Almost good. 
Almost. I almost had it. <laughs> uh, life finds a way. Uh, evil finds a way. So, in a sense, you, you can't kill evil. It's always going to rear its ugly head. The demons exist whether the, ne the Necronomicon has been discovered or not. So, if Ash goes back in time and prevents himself from discovering it and unleashing these demons, someone is going to, whether he does it or not. Which, you could tell in a different thread now, in a different reality, in a different universe with the multiverse kind of aspect, you could tell Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, or um, Army of Darkness in completely different circumstances. It's the butterfly effect. One small change could affect everything. And now you could take Lucy Lawless's character, who, what was her name? I, I just mentioned it, but I forget. Uh, Ruby. So you could take Ruby and you could put her back into that time where, you know, her as the Biff Tannen trying to, to gain access to this thing and really go there. Um, but you could jump around and do different things. You could tell different stories within the same universe. And the thing that I liked about Ash versus the Evil Dead is they used the Necronomicon as the backstop to the whole thing and really opened it up to bringing in different demons and really exploring other than just the regular incantation, um, was it the Kandarian incantation? But it, it, instead of just focusing on that, they they brought in other demons and other forces of nature and, and different portals and rifts in time and space. So you could literally go anywhere. You could go anywhere with the Necronomicon as your playbook, uh, literally and figuratively. So uh, to me, it really opens things up from a setting perspective setting perspective from a narrative perspective and even from characters as i mentioned you could go back even you know lee majors I, I don't believe is with us any longer but you could bring back ash's father or maybe uh tear a page from hellraiser where maybe ash sees a, a glimpse into hell and his father's there and ash has forgiven his father there's a, a thread in the story where they don't get along and ash hated his dad and his dad was pretty rotten to him but there's like a, a it's, it's traditional storytelling, the family and overcoming rifts and things like that. And maybe maybe Ash sees his father in hell being tortured or some demon has a hold of his soul and, and something to that extent, Freddy Krueger style, I guess. Uh, I'm just pulling from all my resources here. And Ash could now explore the realm of the dead as opposed to just the realm of the living. I know they dip their toe into that a little bit with the series, but you can really go anywhere you want to go. Um, you could almost do like a game of death type thing, like the old Bruce Lee movie where, you know, Ash goes to the seven levels of hell or something to that extent and explores each one. So you could re you could really go anywhere. And I think an animated series opens that up and it elongates the ability to tell those stories that you may not have in a feature film. Uh, some options have been we've seen with, as I mentioned, the Disney Star Wars series or the Marvel series, you can instead of condensing things down into a three hour movie or, or a series of movies, you can tell all these different stories in a longer format, do a slow burn, develop things and characters more richly and tell much better stories with the series, which is what I thought they were doing with evil dead. But unfortunately that was cut short now with more avenues, this could be interesting. Uh, and I'd really take a cue from Rick and Morty. I may have mentioned that I may have just said it in here with my notes, but if you look at their their way, they do a lot of riffing on sci-fi and even in horror at times. And if you just kind of did Rick and Morty meets like um, Evil Dead, that's kind of the concept that you could have in exploring all these different worlds within this same universe that already exists. Um, and you can really just make up anything you want. You could incorporate, and I'm not sure if there are other universes that are owned by... Uh, Sam Raimi or whoever owns the Evil Dead franchise rights, but you can even bring other things into the fold. Uh, myself and Benny Slash did an episode of They're All Dead, I believe it was, our old horror podcast a few years ago, talking about Ash versus Jason because I believe it was Adam Marcus, the director of Jason Goes to Hell, because they used the Necronomicon, because they used the Kandarian Dagger, um, their working concept and blueprint was essentially that Ash and Jason exist within the same universe and that Jason is technically a deadite in some ways and those universes could come together. It never happened on screen. Uh, it happened in the comics 
to some extent, and we've talked about that on, on other episodes. I think I think the horror reanimated episode where I go into that a little bit is uh, Jason versus Freddy versus Ash. I think it's still up on the archive here on the channel on YouTube. So check that out in the other videos if you want when we're done. It's actually a deep dive into the that story and what else could have been, what other stories could have been told. But you could really go, as I mentioned, in a number of directions, including if you, someone was able to get the rights, even though they're tied up right now, to Friday the 13th, you could bring Jason into the fold. And see, now you can tell that story. If you're able to secure the rights, which is a very, very steep hill to climb, and very treacherous, especially right now, given not only the rights battle, but with, um, uh, with the storied history of not being able to put Freddy versus Jason together, it'd be almost impossible to do it now. So, again, you could do that now, 30 years after the fact, when the concept was first brought about in the 90s or 2000s when the comics came out. Now you can tell those stories in, in visual format, but in a longer form and more digestible for the modern uh, audiences if you went a Netflix route. So, I mean, you could literally do anything. They could buy the rights to Hellraiser, and you could do that and bring that in somehow, although I don't, again, think that's going to happen. So, you know, as I mentioned, they could expand into the multiverse theory. Um, and someone just used the bathroom right next to me. Thanks a lot. Um, the animated nature could open the show up to more possibilities that I think real-life films may not be able to realize or afford. So let's think about this, too. If you have a, a movie or a series... For Netflix or for stars, or as in the, the Ash versus the Evil Dead case, you have budgets you have to meet. You have constraints of the actors. You have the constraints of the effects department. You have the constraints of location. All of these things, which can be circumvented in some ways by animation, because you can animate. Like, look at the universes of like the heavy metal movie from the 80s, or even from Rick and Morty. They did some, some pretty trippy stuff. Uh, Rob Zombie, I'll give him some credit here, his animations on the Beavis and Butthead Do America film, the acid trip in the desert. I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do, especially more so now with computer animation than you could do back in the day uh, when some of these movies first came out. I do think you would sacrifice some of the, the moodier, scarier atmosphere because an animated series is going to be two-dimensional, so you don't get the same... Uh, feel I don't think if you do an animated series which could hurt it in some ways because Ash vs. Evil Dead had a lot of cool scenes where it wasn't like a terrifying experience but you're still dealing with zombies and demons and death and dismemberment and disemboweling or disemboweling uh, but the bright side to that is Evil Dead has always been a sort of cartoony uh, comedic slant on horror anyway so now you're just taking it one step further and making it an actual cartoon. And uh, w one thing I noticed, actually, and this is not a slight on Bruce Campbell at all, but looking at the picture that I used, hang on, let me go back up here. Look at this picture that I used for <laughs> the placeholder. He almost looks like an amalgamation of Shemp and Moe Howard from the, S the Three Stooges, which I know the Three Stooges were a big inspiration on Sam Raimi when putting these together originally. So now you're just taking it one step further, and it's it's not just cartoonish. Now it's an actual cartoon, which I think brings the whole series full circle due to the nature of the original films in some ways. The only way I think that's a negative is the new Evil Dead film that came out a few years ago, 2018, 2019. I'm not sure on the year. Uh, that was much more serious in tone than Evil Dead 2. Um, Ash vs. Evil Dead, Army of Darkness. So that would be an interesting take. Maybe you could continue the films in that other universe in a more serious note and then do the comedic aspect in the cartoon. That I may be, that may be a, a way to bridge the gap between the two. One could continue as a more serious film experience. The other one could continue as a more comedic television experience through animation. So uh, some difficulties there. And the more I think about it, I think stylistically it would be really cool to see what they could do with their imaginations and animations. I mean, take the, and I know, I don't think Greg Nicotero or the guys from what used to be K&B FX worked on Ash vs. Evil Dead. 
But imagine taking some visionaries like Tom Savini or Rick Baker or um, or Greg Nicotero or, I mean, in the, in the past, John Carl Beekler, God rest his soul, he passed a year or two ago. But imagine taking some of the greats of horror effects and having them consult with animators, right? Because I'm sure most of these guys can draw as well, but have them consult with animators and see what kind of worlds and creatures and monsters and, and effects type of deaths, kills, explosions, uh, disemboweling, as I mentioned. Like, see what they can come up with visually for the show. I think that kind of collaboration could really benefit as well. Uh, I know we've seen Tom Savini do some work with WWE recently with uh, The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, which... That was some of the best stuff they did in a number of years. I mean, you had Bray Wyatt's head like a lantern. Let me see if I can find that. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Tom Savini school helped, and that next generation of talent helped with some of that stuff. So Savini, WWE. Uh, so looking here at the Fiend mask, this is pretty much his. There we go. I found it. So let me scooch this over. If you look, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you. If you're listening, I apologize, but you can Google Bray Wyatt Fiend. This mask was designed by the Tom Savini School of Makeup Effects. And it's pretty much, it's got a, there's a concept of almost like the Joker. There's an episode of Batman or uh, the comics where the Joker skins some, and maybe it was, Gotham was there a show called Gotham for a while where the Joker the, or who they thought was a Joker pulled someone's face off and stapled it to his own something to that extent this was when the fiend was supposed to have been burned alive he also did some work for Callisto when he was still there and then there was something else he did ah Luke Harper's mask so he's done some really cool modern stuff in wrestling. There's that one too. He's done some cool modern stuff in wrestling, and I think that could also translate, as I mentioned, to animation, which is a completely uncharted universe for horror in, in many ways, unless someone could illuminate me to some very... I, I really would be interested if anyone's listening, and, and <laughs> if anyone's listening out there, why am I doing this if not? <laughs> Neuroses. Um, if anyone out there has any horror-related cartoons, some I know there's been some some music videos that have been done. We've talked about them on Break the Apocalypse at times, but I want to. I'm interested to see if anyone's ever been able to pull off a scary cartoon, and I don't mean uh, the Black Cauldron or something, a uh, 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 Muppets um, Jim Henson project that has scared kids. I mean something really atmospheric and scary that could translate to something like this. So if you have any ideas for music videos or features that have been put together that could could give us an idea of what it may look like or how it could be effective, send them my way. Bshowbrian at gmail.com or you can find me on all my socials at bshowbrian. Um, let me make sure I didn't miss anything because there was a couple things I did write down. Um, no, I think I got mostly everything. I mean, you could... I mentioned you could bring back other characters like Kelly and Pablo, and I was really, I was a big fan of those two. Dana DiLorenzo is very attractive and uh, a very good actress. And really, there's certain characters, like the Star Wars thing with the third sister. Um, I don't think she was a terrible actress. I don't think she had great material. And some of the ways she presented was almost trying too hard to be scary, and she really wasn't. She seemed like a nice girl. And a, a talented actress, and I, I know there was a lot of people who who shouted racial things at her from social media. It, it's just it's terrible. It's repugnant. Um, I think she did a good job with what she was given, but to me, she I never really bought her as this like sinister badass character. Physically, did everything well. Uh, toward the end of the series, when she was able to show the vulnerability of that character, I thought she did well. Just early on, I I can see why some people maybe didn't dig the character. Dana DiLorenzo, um, I, I wasn't sure on because, you know, you're killing zombies and demons and all sorts of things, deadites, I guess. And her and Pablo both stepped up and became two really badass characters that were able to flesh out and develop. 
And uh, even Ash's daughter, she's a little less, but she gets the, the little nod because of uh, the bloodline taking on her responsibilities from dad and following in his footsteps. Yeah, so she gets a pass. But um, great cast, great show. If this gets to continue, I'll be super happy to see where they go with, with Kelly and Pablo and Ash's daughter, who I can't remember at, uh, for the life of me what her name is. It's been a while since I watched the series. And now that I know it's on Netflix, if I, I, might get, I might go back and watch. Brandy. Is that her name? Brandy? I don't know. But I will be v- very interested to see where it goes from here, and I'm very intrigued. Um, I don't have time to play the video game, or else I would have bought it by now. I think I bought the Friday the 13th game when it came out. And I think I've paid, uh, played it six times since then. So uh, I just I don't have the time. I barely have the time to do this, and I still try to squeeze these out for everybody. So uh, I just I appreciate everyone. I know Jock Tastico, um, Spandex Tarzan on Twitter. I got to sh- shout a few people out for uh, continuing to keep me going with suggestions. And um, let's see, Jamie Pennycook always giving me ideas. Shaheen from uh, from, from uh, I keep thinking Nuclear Heat so that's, because that's his design company, but uh, Planet Mondo, he he's he just put up oh he just put up a a trailer review for I think it was uh, the the X prequel. What's it called? Not Maud. Um, Pearl. Maud. What the f- what the hell's wrong with me? So he just put up a Pearl uh, trailer review. I know he really enjoyed X. I still have to watch that, um, but. Yeah, Jamie Pennycook, Jock Tastico, uh, Shaheen's always uh, willing to let me bounce ideas off him, and I appreciate it. Always very supportive. John as well from Break the Apocalypse. Go check those guys out too. Just uh, roasting marshmallows on the dumpster fire. That is Modern Society. And although I cannot join them full time, I will be joining them next week for the 100th episode. I thought it would be fitting for me to join them for the week. Uh, for a special edition of that podcast since I helped uh, launch that with them. And I was unfortunately had to leave because I, I, my schedule doesn't work out with them anymore. And I, it's right now about, I don't want to say what time it is. <laughs> Let's just say I do this when my kids go to bed and I have a little bit of extra time and I try to carve it out. But um, Ash versus Evil Dead, I want to know what you guys think. Leave your comment in the description. Uh, what direction do you want to see them go? Would you rather see them go more comedic? Would you rather see them go full-on gore like the remake was? Do you want to see them envelop uh, all the movies into this universe multiverse style? Or do you want to see them continue on with the futuristic Mad Max style with the, uh, is it the Oldsmobile? <laughs> is it the Oldsmobile? Yeah, I don't know. Um, that thing has traveled through space and time. So, and another interesting thing, too, is you could do Young Ash. You could do Young Ash versus Old Ash. That'd be kind of interesting. See, I have gave this a lot of thought, but the the more I get going, the more ideas come to my head. And I'm trying to do more commentary-style videos as opposed to, here are the 16 ideas I thought of for this show, and it could be this in this character, like a wrestling fantasy booking thing. I'm trying to mold this show to be more commentary so it's more palatable for you guys and funner for you to listen to other than me just kind of masturbating with my grand visions <sighs> again i'm letting you to i'm letting you in i've cracked open my fucking skull and i spill my thoughts out onto this this desk and, and into the camera and microphone and i hope you enjoy it so my name is b show brian i'm gonna be back next week with uh, probably another podcast episode and i'm gonna try to put uh, some other different kind of stuff together too for the show So thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for everyone that subscribed. Thank you for everyone who's checking me out on my socials. Uh, Like, comment, subscribe, share. My name's B-Show Brian, and that's it for this week.